Okay, I think this is recording now. Hi, my name is um, Kim, also Crayley. Um, that's the name for my YouTube channel. Sorry, I'm kind of recording this on the fly because I had uh, a few things to say and it just seemed like typing it down in a response at the bottom would just seem inadequate or something. Actually, I found a lot of useful information in your um, video because it basically said a lot of what I've been feeling over the years. In fact, it was just about a mirror image. So I just wanted to let you know you're not the only asexual Mormon who has had these kinds of feelings and questions. Um, throughout high school, I didn't really have an opportunity to think about romance and sex all that much because, or at least personally, for romance and sex personally because I was too busy trying to answer the questions of my friends who were insane. Let's just put it that way. I had to help them to deal with their romantic or sexual issues. So a lot of times my personal feelings just kind of got shoved to the wayside and I kind of took in stride all of the um, all of the issues that were discussed in church and just shoved it to the back of my mind. Well, when I got to college, which is where I am now, I'm a senior who's going to be graduating in 20 days. When I got to be a senior, or got into college, I'm sorry, I went to the young single adult branch in um, my area. And I don't know if you've been to one of the young single adult branches, but it's full of discussion about marriage. You know, they also do a lot of other discussions about the gospel, but the purpose, um, one of the main purposes of a young single adult branch is to prepare singles for marriage. Contrary to popular belief, it is not a big meat menu where, you know, young men and women can peruse and try to find their eternal companion, but it's a good place to meet other people. Unfortunately, the feelings of a lot of people in one of these branches are get married now. And I know um, quite a few older people nearing the age of 30, I'm 22 myself, um, <clears throat> who that's really a big portion of what they talk about. And they're wondering, you know, why they're not married. And of course, if they feel that you know, if you aren't focusing on marriage, there might be something wrong with you. And that's just something I've been struggling with because that's not how I feel. I'm looking at marriage as, you know, uh, companionship. And, okay, I, sorry, this is very, very unstructured response here. Like I say, it was just on the fly. I found out about asexuality a year ago and that was during the um, summer when um, I had, no kidding, three guys basically in the space of a f month or two confess their feelings for me and I was just like, whoa, slow down people. Because <laughs> I didn't feel the same way about them and for some odd reason, um, it just pulled out this huge emotional response with me. And it just made me feel really uncomfortable to know that these three guys had liked me. And a lot of other people might think, oh, I'm so flattered. And it made me feel bad because one of them was one of my good friends. And, you know, it made me feel bad to have to turn down their feelings. But I was trying to figure out why. Why was I feeling this way? After some research, I realized that, you know, mentally... I wasn't comfortable with the idea that they may see me as a sexual object. Maybe it's it had to do with my misunderstanding of love and the, you know, how love and romance are intertwined. I don't know. It's still something I'm still trying to work out. And I know that, you know, people who love each other and they have sex in marriage, there's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't mean that they're, you know, d making each other into sexual objects and, you know, just using each other as a sex toy, but for me that was just something I felt uncomfortable with and I didn't know why. So I went on to Adam and that basically opened my, my eyes and I realized that this might be the reason why 
I have, um, why rom this <laughs> question of romance and sex made me feel so uncomfortable because I never realized that there was another way to look at it. And I, um, where was I going with that? One of the things you said was, um, I forgot where I was just going with that. I'll have to edit that out. Um, <laughs> okay, so basically, let me just end this real quickly since I just completely lost my train of thought there. I have like a million things going on inside of my head. Basically, the point of this video was, um, you're not alone. I felt exactly the way you said about a lot of things. And, um, I just, it was just refreshing to hear another person's experiences. Because it's, you know, obviously not something that's talked about. Asexually in, asexuality in general is not accepted by a lot of people because it's a fairly new orientation that's even just recently been recognized. So it's good to have people who are out there and talking about it. It's good to have exposure to that sort of thing to um, you just people in general so they can know that their experiences aren't the only things that um, you know, people in general are going through, if that makes any sense. You know, there are people who are different. Now I remember what it was that I was going to say, because you uh, mentioned that your parents or family had said to you, you, this is just something you'll grow out of. First of all, that's, sorry for the language, that's BS. Yes, you may grow out of it. You might. But I figure that if, you know, I'm 22 years by, old by this point, shouldn't I have grown out of it by now, even if I were a late bloomer? So, right now I don't feel like I'll ever grow out of it. If I've been an asexual up to this point, I probably will continue to be an asexual. And... I don't see why that should be a problem with a lot of people. I'm, s quite frankly, I'm mystified why so many people are so adamant in proving that asexuality doesn't exist. So, I don't know. I just don't know why they think that way. I probably will never know. But, personally, I think that a way to, you know, m make people's, make people more open-minded is to expose them to asexual thinking. <laughs> so thank you for making your video. I'm sorry if it seemed like it was rambling, but um, I just felt it was important to give my two cents on it. And okay, thank you and have a good day.